On the Fourth Day by Andy Swindells Day 1, Manchester Town Centre Karen Whitaker was in a rush to get to work, as per usual. Police sirens could be heard in the distance as emergency vehicles sped to whatever was happening on the other side of town. The last thing she wanted to do was to stop and talk to the woman holding a clipboard and pen. Karen had no time for surveys or offers to change her energy provider. The woman made a beeline straight for Karen and said, Excuse me, could I please have a word? She got no further than that as Karen dismissed her with a wave of the hand and a Not today, I'm not interested, thank you, reply before upping her pace and leaving the frustrated woman behind. Day 2 Oh, good grief, thought Karen, as she approached the same clipboard lady, waiting at exactly the same spot as the day before. This time the lady had stood her ground holding up the clipboard like a stop-and-go traffic sign. Karen was not in the mood for talking, as she dodged to the left to get round the clipboard lady. The woman had anticipated her move and made her block her with her body. Again the woman said, Please, you must listen to me. Karen was fuming inside at the stranger's bolshy attitude. There was no way she was going to give this up start the time of day. Never mind stop to answer her bloody stupid questions. Piss off and go and murder someone else, she replied through gritted teeth. Karen focused on getting past the crazy woman, tuning out her waffling as she left her standing alone once again. Day 3 Oh, for fuck's sake, Karen uttered under her breath as she advanced towards the clipboard warrior once again. The woman's body language was one of conflict. She had her eyes fixed on Karen, not attempting to look civil or courteous in any way. Karen was in a foul mood once more and not up for pussyfooting around. Before the woman could open her mouth to speak, Karen shouted into her face, Whatever it is you're selling, I'm not fucking interested. You keep on harassing me or we'll call the police. The woman was taken aback by Karen's outburst. Karen marched past the lady, holding her hands against her ears and singing loudly in an out of tune way, just like children do when they shut out annoying adults. Karen couldn't help but smirk to herself as she left the silly cow behind again. Day 4 Karen was feeling sick this morning. She wondered if she was coming down with the flu or a 24 hour bug. Even the sight of the clipboard lady didn't have the same effect as the other ground dog days. The dynamics had changed somehow. The woman didn't attempt to block her way. Karen even managed to say a polite good morning as she walked slowly past her. The clipboard lady grabbed hold of Karen's wrist and spoke. I know everything about you, Karen Whitaker. Karen was about to wriggle free from the woman's grip, but her speaking Karen's full name had piqued her curiosity. The woman continued talking. You had a brown Labrador puppy named Paddy when you were a little girl. You two were inseparable. It broke your heart when he had to be put down after he was hit by a car. Karen was stunned into silence. How did the stranger know this? The clipboard woman went on to say, you had your first serious kiss with Gary Mason when you were aged 13. You have never even told your husband Steve about this, have you? Karen felt even sicker than before. She had heard enough. I'm sorry, I have no idea who you are. I have to go to work or we'll be late, she replied, breaking free from the stranger. The clipboard lady spoke again. Today is Sunday and there will be nobody there. And how will you let yourself into the building? You have no handbag or keys with you. Karen stood there in a state of confusion, looking towards the clipboard lady for answers. You're dead, said the woman. Four days ago, you were sat on the train on your way to work. You never noticed the man with the red rucksack board the train and sit next to you. One stop before it reached the station. You were busy watching a video clip on your phone. It was your daughter's fifth birthday party and she was dressed up as Elsa from Frozen. She looked cute blowing the candles out on the cake you and Steve had made for her. 
The moment the train pulled into the station, the man detonated a bomb that killed over 40 people and injured hundreds of others who were on the platform. He never felt a thing. It was instantaneous. Karen doubled over, clutching her stomach in pain. She desperately wanted to scream at the woman and call her a liar. No sound would leave her lips. She knew the woman was telling the truth. The woman gently held on to Karen's wrists and said, You have to move on. Your time here is at an end. For your own sake, let go. Karen pulled free from the grip and asked, Who? What are you? I'm you, she replied. I am what you should come to be. I just haven't been born yet. Karen was shaking with fear, trying to get her head around what the lady was saying. You're talking about reincarnation? The woman held out her arm to show that her hand was fading away. It may be too late now. It was supposed to happen the moment when you died. My mother has been in intensive care for the past three hours. She loses the baby. It ends for us both. Karen dropped to her knees, tears streaming down her cheeks. There were so many questions and no time to ask them. Karen lay down on her side and began to kick her legs and thrash her arms spastically. A sound like TV static filled the air and began to grow in intensity. The clipboard and pen fell to the floor as black dust dissipated where the lady had stood. Karen stopped struggling and lifted her knees to her chest, lying there in a fetal position. She closed her eyes and sucked her thumb for comfort until she faded away. Dust to dust, ashes to ashes. The static sound faded away into a deathly silence. There was nothing to see but blackness. Ten seconds passed by like an eternity. The sound of a newborn child crying can be heard as she enters the world.